Hello everyone, Greg with Drifter Journey here, back with another video for you. This one came in by request. Uh, today we are going to get the van stuck. So you might be asking, why are we going to get the van stuck? Well, one of our followers uh, had sent a question about when we air down and what reasons we do that and so on and so forth and how we get unstuck when we do get stuck. So um, we've actually already been stuck in the sand twice on this Baja trip, both times at inconvenient times to film first one was getting late in the evening and we couldn't get to camp so we had to get it out real quick and we were slightly stressed and then the other night was actually in the dark so there definitely would have been no filming uh, we buried that one deep though we were up to the bumper so uh, yeah we're gonna show you um, driving in sand in a ProMaster uh, we are on a beach outside of Cabo San Lucas slash San Jose and uh, there's lots of people around so if we get too stuck we should be able to get out pretty easily so I'm not too concerned um, other than knowing I'm gonna get super sweaty doing this video so let's get into it we'll talk a little bit about um, airing down driving in sand driving on washboards driving in rocky conditions and self recovery what we use and uh, yeah, if you do purchase any of the products that we show, we'll have links to Amazon below in the description. Um, if you buy them through our links, we do get a small commission. We do appreciate that. And if you do any shopping on Amazon, use our top link. It doesn't cost you anything. It sends us a little bit of money. It keeps things going. Uh, thank you. Let us know if you have any questions. Comment, like, subscribe. Stay tuned. Let's do this. So with sand, it helps to have a little bit of experience and sometimes you don't get that experience until you've done it wrong a couple of times. But we knew to stop here because it's much more firm and you can just tell that people haven't been sinking. Whereas not too far away from this spot, you can see people have been sinking. And even further up the beach, you can just see deeper tire tracks so it looks softer. And the... Uh, Biggest thing is if you're in doubt, just get out and walk it and you can even like grab a shovel and start stabbing into the sand to see how soft it is. Um, it's pretty obvious once you start getting used to like what sand kind of looks like and feels like, but if you are trying to get somewhere sandy, you can always air down and see what happens. Um, but we usually try to play it safe and stick to the hard pack stuff. Right, so we're going to start off fully aired up, which is around 70 PSI. And so this would be in an instance where you would air down ahead of time if you know you're going to go into soft sand. Um, and that depends on your comfort level with your tires and your vehicle. But uh, we want to show you how airing down helps, so we'll start aired up. I'm stuck. Is it bad yet or no? It didn't no? take long. Yeah, I wouldn't go further. So the first thing, when you get stuck, stop. Don't make it worse. I'm gonna see if I make it a little worse by going and see if I can get back out of my situation, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to. Is it pretty deep? Yeah. Ah. So. So we sunk it a little sunk further. It more. Which means it's harder to get out. Which makes it harder to get out. <laughs> so this would be the perfect opportunity to air down and see if that helps. So when we air down, we use our Stans tire deflators. Uh, but yeah, these guys here, not the cheapest, but they're pretty awesome. You get four of them. They're adjustable for different PSIs. 
which I still have done a crappy job and not actually dialed them in yet. Uh, but you just put them on and they turn off automatically when you get to the proper pressure. We normally are around 72 PSI. These drop us down to 27 to 30. I want to get them all set to 30 at some point. Uh, but you just put them on and they turn off automatically when they get to the right amount. And there's four, so you just pop them all on and wait. Alright, for the sake of not being totally stupid about this, I'm going to dig out around the tires a little bit. Uh, we are aired down now, so we're going to be curious to see if that actually just gets us out before using any traction. Uh, I don't think it's going to, but I'm going to dig out around it a little bit and just see what happens. So you kind of want to choose which direction is going to be the easiest way to get out. In this case, we're going to try to back out because there's a lot more soft sand in front of us than there is behind us. Yeah. <laughs> All right, air down. I'm turning the electric skid control off. ESC, whatever that stands for. I think going electric skid control. <laughs> Slip control? Wow. Yeah. Real quick. Yeah. No. Nope. You made some progress, but. We stuck. You're stuck about the same as you were before. Yeah, I think we would have to dig out a bigger channel. You think I, I think I might be able to pull this off though. Yeah. Nope. No? You went a little deeper there. That's where I originally was. Yeah, at. I wouldn't go further than that. Yeah, I don't know if you're going to be able to get past that without digging more. Yeah. Well, let's do it. It's pretty close though. Yeah. It's like a half car's length from getting out. <laughs> Big rock. Might be helpful over here. All right, next attempt. We're using some Go Tread traction pads. These are foldable. They double as leveling blocks and they stow away pretty easily. Uh, they recently came out with a longer version. I'd probably get the bigger ones, um, but these are what we have. They actually sent them to us a while back and we haven't had to pull out our big traction pad since we've had these. We've gotten a giant box, box truck unstuck with them, several vehicles, including ourselves. Uh, so yeah, the idea with this, stick it deep down under the tire so it has something to bite onto and then drive it'll get sucked down under ideally by the time we get off of it we have enough momentum to just keep going because as you saw as I lose momentum I just sink again so sometimes with these or traction pads that are you know rigid still with the two-wheel drive you're gonna get off of them and you're still in soft sand so you might have to just keep doing a little ladder system until you get out
Oh, I'm standing on it. That's that. Now let's just drive it with it air down and see if we just get it stuck again. But once it's aired down and you're stuck, you can't air down again. So we'll just be getting really unstuck. But we'll see how it does air down through the same stuff. I just seen the van bouncing on the way out. I needed to stay on the gas to keep it moving. Uh, but I don't want to bounce, obviously, because every time it's trying to sink. So as soon as it stopped bouncing, I let off the gas and just kept rolling so that I wouldn't just dig it down in again. Momentum is your friend. Let's see if it holds true here. <laughs> we were doing better until I sunk it. What happened, babe? I turned the wheel and lost momentum. I was trying to retreat to safety too early. Right. All right, I want to see if I can just back out of this one or am I screwed? Yeah. I don't know. You can try. <laughs> nope. Yeah, you probably stop. We're done. Yeah, you're going deeper, babe. So as you see, airing down does still not make you an off-road vehicle. If you're going to go through super soft sand, uh, don't slow down at all. So usually what we'll do is if there's like a 20 or 30 foot section and we really want to get to the other side of it, just hit it with speed and, and go straight and cruise it. But we're not going to be driving long stretches of beach in this vehicle. Yeah. So in this spot, it looks like we're actually closer to hard pack going forward so Greg is digging out in front of the van and this side is actually sunk in pretty deep so he's gonna have to dig out underneath the front bumper there in order to make sure that we're not just pushing further into the sand all right so I'm gonna come out I'm gonna come out of here with so much speed that we just drive away <laughs> That's too about why I like the, I wish we had the longer one. Yeah. So you get an extra, I think they're six feet now. Oh, wow. These are probably what, four? Yeah. Freedom! I think we're screwed. Yeah. Is it out yet? Yep. Okay. It sucked him through. Scroll down the front again? Yeah, hold on. So one thing to note in situations like this is if you get stuck and you aren't able to self-recover, you may need help, in which case it's important to know your vehicle and understand where you can tie into for pulling out. Um, the ProMaster has a anchor point on the front and that's ideal. So there is a tow point on the front and the back. Um, on the back, it's on the right side. It's just a little hook. And then we also have a hitch that we installed so you could hook up to the hitch if need be yeah and then the front is a little screw-in thing which comes with your jack your jack so yeah. don't lose it yeah it's important um, the other but, important thing is to um have toe straps and whatnot because there may be passerby that can help you but they may not have toe straps that are like good enough to pull out your vehicle so it's always good to have those with you uh, another piece of equipment that we recommend having is a shovel that actually does move sand and we do have an avi shovel that has a much bigger spade and you can really move sand with that. And if we were in a serious situation, we would be getting that out and both of us would be digging because that helps a lot. This spade works good, but if you're really trying to get material moved, a bigger shovel helps. Nope. Yeah. Lots? Uh. We're stuck. We'll be fine. Move Did we move a little? Not really. Fine.
What are you calling that area right there? The Freedom Zone? Freedom Sand? <laughs> it's within reach. You're on him. Go, 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 go. Ah. Well, you're at least out of the hole, but. You might have had it. You're on him. Nope. Dang. So if you make it down to this wet sand, you'll notice it's much sturdier than the soft, dry stuff. So if you can get down to that, you might be in a better shape for the pad to grab onto it. Too bad we can't strap up some of those horses, huh? Yeah. All right, you ready? You got sand all over your forehead. Oh yeah, I'm covered. Let's get close up to that. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, today might be laundry and shower day. Yeah. All right. Okay. Good. Go. Go, go, go. It wasn't that bad. Five rounds. But overall, well, we probably spent a half hour on that one. Yeah. You don't want to get stuck. You don't, I mean, but, but what did we learn? Stop <laughs> drop. before you screw yourself. Yeah, stop before you bury it up to the body. All right, so um, we do have a pair of Tread Pros, so rigid recovery boards. They are mounted under the bed. Um, as you can see, not going to be the easiest to get out. Uh, we got to take the surfboard out and unscrew them, take them down. Got to get them extra clean and put them back in. So those are our kind of backup. You know, if we would have pulled those out, it probably would have made this go much quicker because we could have put the go treads and then those right after it. So we would have had a seven foot section of firm ground to gain momentum on. But these are our extra backup. Hopefully we don't have to pull them out. We have not actually pulled them out since the go treads arrived. Uh, and then we will show you the rest of our recovery gear. All right, so this is the avalanche shovel we were talking about. We didn't need to pull it out, but moves a lot more sand at a time. Find the glass ball. Hmm. Then we have this bag of Gorilla Moto gear. Now in this bag, Super heavy duty toe strap. Uh, I chose the end, the one with the loops on the end. Uh, I don't like the metal hooks on them. Right. Got some D shackles so this can go around the toe point and then through the toe strap. Like so. So you could pull that. Got two of those. Three because I found one. Bonus. And the all important little hook that doesn't look like it would do much. Probably need a screwdriver, but no. This goes in there. So the Pro Master, that's your front hook point. When all this debacle's over, you're gonna need to put airbag in your tires because you don't wanna be driving on the roads with them super low because it's dangerous. So we have a Viair 300P air compressor. We learned we had an older one that was also Viair, which was great, but it just wasn't meant to go up to high pressure. So it used to take over an hour to fill up, uh, all four. So the 300P, is meant to go up, what does it say, 150 PSI max. We run it up to 80 on the high end, 72-ish. I mentioned, but the Bayer 300P takes us just about 20 minutes or less to fill up all four tires. Much more peaceful.
All right, guys, thanks for watching. That wraps up our uh, getting stuck on purpose, just to show you how to get yourself out and all the gear that we use in order to help us do that. There's um, a few other reasons why you might want to air down. That would be washboard roads. If we know that we're on a road where it's going to be really rough for a while, it does help quite a bit. So you can air down and um, it just helps absorb some of the shock so that the vehicle isn't like rattling apart. And then it also helps with traction if you're on like some kind of off-road 4x4 type roads. And uh, so that wraps it up. Greg's going to air us up and we're going to head to town and get some tacos. Be sure to like, leave us a comment, a question. We appreciate you.